Hello everyone! This video is actually a follow-up to my first EDB video. So if you are still new to EDBs, I recommend you watch my first video before you watch this one. The first video goes over what an EDB is, how to generally create them, give you some ideas, and how to save them to your computer and use them on Class In. This video is going to go more detail of the tools that you can use when creating your EDBs. So, and if you stay till the end of this video, I'm going to show you a really cool EDB that I've created that you can use over and over again with different students, different classes, different lessons. So stick around to see that EDB. Now let's take a look at our tools. So there's three types of images that you can use for an EDB. This you probably already know if you're familiar with EDBs. Of course, we could do our shapes, so like the circle or the square. We can use our text that are also draggable. One little hint for your text. When I first started with Class In, my largest text was this one right here. And then I learned that there's actually a larger text a lot bigger and I like to use this larger text for my EDBs because it's easier for the students to see and click and drag. So if your text is, does not get to this size, go to your settings. So right here down on the settings, go to system settings and you will scroll down to the classroom and it says classroom text box font size settings. My default was set to this, so 24 was my largest text box. But if you change it to this one, 36 will be your largest text box. So if you want the larger text, make sure you go in and change your settings so you can use it in your EDBs. So here's my text. And then third is an image. So in my last video, I showed you how to get images from the internet, Google, and put them into your classroom. Of course, you can do that, but there's actually a really cool way to get images directly from Class In. If you go to your toolbox, you go to the teaching, there is a huge library of images. They have letters. I really like these letters. I use these letters for my younger students who are still learning their letter sounds and blending letters sounds together to make words. I use these all the time with making EDBs. They have math, Chinese, physics, chemistry, biology, music, and cartoon. So there are so many images, but don't rely just on scrolling through. I have found that sometimes if I type in the search, I can find images that I did not see when I was scrolling. So I'm going to look for a tree. Lots of different trees I can choose. I'm going to use this one. So here's my tree. And then I'm going to use an apple. And there's my choices for that. And I click on my apple and it brings it right into Class In. So I like using this. I always check the library, the image library in Class In first. If I can't find it in there, then I go into Google search and then I find my images that way. This is a lot faster and a lot easier. So I love it. So now let's go into our tools within the EDB. So when you click on an image, whether it's the shapes or the picture or the letter here, you notice a little tool area underneath. So I'm going to go through each of those tools and how you use them. So first are shapes. Well, if you look at the left here, you see a cir two circles. I didn't even play around with these when I first started with my EDBs. I learned about these later and they're really cool. I really like them. So here is your outline. So you can make the outline smaller or thicker. I can change it to the dotted line here. I can change the color. So it's faster to edit this way rather than having to create a new box if you change your mind on the color. Then the next one is the fill color. I really like this for having those bright colors that stand out for the student. So I can change the outline color and then I can change the fill color. So I can make it any color I want or I can keep it blank. So I'm gonna make this pink so I can have my outline and my fill color two different colors. You can do the same thing with the circle. I can make it thicker 
and I can change the color on the inside. So next is my lock. This one's pretty easy. This locks the shape. So if I'm in class and I don't want the student to move the box because I'm having them drag something into it or drag something out of it, I want it locked in place. So it's important to do that because once your student starts moving things around, it gets crazy. So you have to try to get it back from them. So always lock things you don't want to move. And you can do that with my circle. I can do that with my letter. I can do that with my pictures here, and I can do it with my text. So lock whatever you don't want moved. So now I'm going to unlock, and I'm going to go to this next square with the little arrow. This is a lock, but it's not locking the image. It's locking the ability to resize the image. So here, I can make it bigger, smaller. Same thing with my circle, bigger, smaller. My A and my images, I can always make them bigger or smaller. But if I want them to be able to drag the apple, but not change the size of the apple, I click on this little square. So now you notice I can't change the size, but I can still move the apple. The reason this is very important is because think about what our students are using. They have mostly iPads. So I have a little mouse that I can easily click in the middle of this apple, but when they're using their fingers, their finger is sometimes the same size as the shape they're moving. So often when they try to drag, they accidentally click on the corner and instead of dragging it, they end up making it huge. And then you have to resize it and it takes up a lot of time in class. So if you have something you want them to drag, but you don't want them to change the size, lock that square. So now I have my apple, I can lock the circle, I can lock my square. So that's also a very important tool. The next one is the three layered squares. This is to bring to front or bring to back. So everything is always ordered the way you enter it into the classroom. So for my tree and my apple, I put the tree in the classroom first and then I put the apple. So that's the way it is layered, just like that. Notice the A. I put the A in the classroom before the tree, so if I drag the A, it goes behind my tree. So if I want to have objects go on top of something, I might have to change the layering. So let's say I want my A to go on my tree. So I would click on the three layered squares, and I want the bring to front. Now, when I drag my A, it goes over my tree. This is important for any activity where you want the student to drag an object on top of another object. The next tool over is my two squares. This is my duplicate button. So let's say I have them blending A's to different other letters. I don't wanna have to go into my teaching box and click, 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 click all the A's, I can just duplicate. And it's also really good for during class. Let's say, oh, I need another A. Instead of having to go find it in my toolbox, I can just duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. So I have all of my A's that I need. And then of course, my last button, the trash can. I can easily go to the trash can if I have too many. So these tools will help you create your EDBs and make you work faster and more efficiently. So now let's look back at our text. So the text is a little different. You're not going to have all the same tools because I can't fill my text and I can't resize it because it's just a set font number. So my text, I can still lock, so I can't move it, but I can't do the other thing here. I can duplicate. I can order them to the front or back if I want them to go in front of a box or behind a box. So let's say I want it to go behind, send it back. Now it disappears behind the box. There is one thing that I just learned yesterday about text that is important to know because a lot of our students are using iPads. So let's say you have 
vocabulary words that you want them to drag into sentences. Sometimes we like to make them look nice, so we want to put like a box around the words. So here's my box, and then I want to lock the box, and I'm going to put the words in my box that I want the student to drag into my sentences. It looks really nice. Putting an outline box makes it look neater, cleaner, but when I drag, I'm able to drag it out of the box. But when I tested it with an iPad for a student, the student is not able to drag those words. They're kind of locked in that box. I don't know why it does that, but it is a problem if you want to use this type of activity with your student. So keep that in mind. There are two things you can do as an alternative. One, just get rid of the box. <laughs> you don't need a box. Just leave it with just the words. Or two, if you want to use a box still, use a box and fill the box. So here's my box. I want it to be a light color so the student can see the words easily. Oh, notice it's now in front of my words. So I'm going to send this to back and then I'm gonna lock it. And now I can put my words in the box for the student to drag the words out of the box into my sentences. If there is a fill color, then the words are able to be dragged by the student in an, on an iPad. So keep that in mind when you're making your EDBs. So those are all the basic tools for editing and moving around your EDBs, making them more colorful and easier for your students to use. So now I'm going to show you a really cool EDB that I have made for my students. So I'm gonna get rid of all this. If you ever want to erase all of your EDBs that are locked or unlocked, you can go to this little paintbrush and everything disappears. So let me show you. First, I'm just gonna show you one that I made. This is like a hidden picture, hidden word activity. So I have my magnifying glass and the student, oh, there's a Q, P, R, smiley face. So the student gets to use the magnifying glass to find the hidden words or the hidden pictures. My students love this activity. So now let me show you how I made it. So I'm gonna scroll down to an empty spot on my board. So there are three main parts to this EDB. If you don't want to have to worry about sending to front or sending to back, it's important that you build it in this order. And the best part is once you build the EDB, you can just save it, open it, edit the words or pictures you want and save it as a new name and you don't have to create a new one every single time. So the first thing you want to put in is your black background. So I'm going to use my square tool and I want to fill this whole area. Make my outline in blue. That way it's easier to see where my square is. And then I'm going to click on it and it's going to fill to black. So now I have my black background, but I actually don't want it black right now because then I won't be able to see the words that I add. So for right now, I'm just going to change it to gray, but I can edit it later to make it black again. Okay, so my next step is my magnifying glass. I'm just going to use the one I already created. I'm just going to duplicate it and bring it down here. So here's my magnifying glass. When finding a magnifying glass, there are two important things. First, you want it to have a transparent background around the magnifying glass, but you want the middle of the magnifying glass to be a color. If it's transparent in the middle, you're not going to be able to see the words. So I want it transparent around the magnifying glass, but not transparent in the middle. So this one has a slightly bluish white color, so I'm able to see the words. So first I had my background, my gray, then I have my magnifying glass, and then the third step is just adding your words or your pictures. So I'm gonna click on my text and I want my text to be black because it needs to blend in with my black background. And I can do numbers, I could do words, I could do letters, 
whatever your student is learning. So for like my level one students, I do letters. For my older students, I'm going to do words. So just do some letters here, H, K, L, M, whatever you want to put. Also, you can add shapes. So let's say your student is learning shapes. I can do a square. And again, I want to make it all black. And I'm going to fill it black. So there's a square. And I can do a circle. And I need that to be all black again. You can even go onto Google. So like for my smiley faces, all I typed in for Google was black smiley face. And I just copied and pasted it into my EDB file. So you can do lots of different things, but it has to be all black. That way it all blends together. So now I have all my images, then I'm going to lock them. Of course, that's always important to lock anything you don't want to move. Lock, lock, lock. That is done. Now I want to change my background back to black because that's the only way the game is going to work. So now I'm going to keep my outline blue. Now my background is black and I want to lock this. That's very important because you don't want your student dragging this black background. That would be very bad. So I'm going to lock the black background. Now I can't see the words anymore. My magnifying glass, I make sure that size is locked, not the image. The size is locked. Now my student can drag the magnifying glass. Oh, there's my H. There's my K. There's my square. There's my M. There's my L. There's my circle. So the student could drag and you can have them call out the letters or the shapes or the pictures they see as they are looking. And then what I do is at the end, I'm like, oh, let's see if you found all the letters. And then I just click on my border again, unlock. I change the color back to the light gray. And then we get to see, oh, you found all the letters or uh oh, you missed one. And then we'll go and find the letters or the words that they missed. And like I said, once you make this one time, save the file. And then when you want to edit, just go to the letter, unlock, and then you can change it to a different letter or change it to a different word. So save that file so you're not creating it every single time. I hope you enjoy this EDB. I hope your students enjoy the EDB. And I hope you learned a little bit more about using those EDB tools to make your EDBs more fun, engaging, and easier for you and your student to use. If you have any questions about making those EDBs, just let me know. Bye, everyone.